Welcome, Mario, to talking about building dream teams. I couldn't imagine a better person to talk to when it comes to building dream teams, but not just building them, potentially also leading them, uh, winning championships. Um, really happy to have you. And yeah, talk about one of my favorite topics, how to build dream teams. Thank you so much. Thank you for the invitation. And also great to speak about that topic. So especially for me as an athlete, so Uh, being in teams since like, I don't know, since I'm eight, nine, ten years old when I grew up playing soccer. So, um, yeah, it's great to talk with you about it. That's wonderful. Maybe we start right away with uh, exactly your experience. Um, so for us, it's always interesting to understand the definition of teams. Um, how yeah. do you define teams for you and, and what particularly makes a great team for you? I think I, I would put it very simple because in the end, it's just like a group of people working on the same goal, the same idea, the same vision at the same time for a longer period. So that's what I experienced when I was young, but also the last 10, 12, 13 years when I became a professional soccer player. And I think that's, that's for me, the most easiest and also simplest, yeah, most easiest definition of, uh, of a team and a group. Um, in the end to be successful so particularly for me as an athlete uh being in that environment for like i don't know 10 12 years but also in the youth so uh, mm -hmm. i think that's that's the best way to describe it having a shared vision a common goal that's one of the things that that clearly differentiate a team from a group uh, for example Do you have an, an example for an outstanding team? I mean, apart from Eintracht Frankfurt um, <laughs> that you were are a part of? And uh, could you describe that just like in a couple of sentences? Uh, yeah, of course. I think when I look back now, um, playing soccer since 13 years, I think the, the most important thing also for me when I scored the goal at the World Cup in Brazil, I think it was it was clear that we had a really, really good, interesting team. I think the combination of like older players, younger players, um, but also to understand that this team is not built like uh, within weeks, it was built within years, you know, it's like they started very early also with Yogi Löw as a coach, 2006, building that team, building that vision. And then it took them like almost eight years to have that success in the end. So I think that's very important also to understand that it's not the dynamic has to grow, the team has to grow, you have to make like experiences like positive and negative, you have to stick together, but also grow together. And I think that's probably the most important learning I had the last 10, 12, 13 years to understand that it takes time first, but also then to like add different things to a team. Like for example, for me as an athlete, being one part of a team, but also you have to coach, you have uh, different people in the team um, and the team around the team. So it's not just 11 players on the pitch. So. I think that's also important to understand that that's more to it than just the success and it's built within years and not not within se um, weeks or months. That, that's a that's a wonderful topic because I, I'd be really interested, especially when you think of the, the national team or also like yeah. uh, your club. I mean, you all come together from from anywhere. You're you're, mm -hmm. you're forming a team not by free will. I mean, of course you are. But <laughs> Uh, but then you you join a club and you don't know the uh, the ten other other people and maybe you know some of them, but are there any particular team building activities that are done? Like w what is it to build a team over eight years? Is that just playing mm. soccer together and then perhaps have a drink, or is there any specific team building that you do? I'm, I think you have to differentiate a bit. Uh, first, if, if you compare it with the national team, it's very different because in the end you meet, let's say six seven eight times a year to have like to have games to play games to have a, uh, an event or world cup european cup so it's it's more difficult to to create that dynamic and also build that team but on the other hand you know is there are only german players you understand each other the language the culture and everything and the uh, big difference to clubs or in teams in clubs in general is that Yeah, it's it's you see them every day. You you play together. That's also the beauty of sports and be beauty of soccer. Because in the end, also now in Frankfurt, we, we have so many different languages and cultures. And in the end, you understand each other on the pitch. I think that's the biggest difference to big corporate uh, companies or whatever. So in the end, this this is the beauty of sports in general. 
but it also makes it difficult because in the end we have, I don't know, five, six languages in the team. To some I can't speak because I don't speak French, for example, and they only speak French. So it's a bit difficult, but on the, in the end you understand each other on the pitch. So that's a bit the, the good thing, but also the bad thing um, about it. And then it's more the common vision, you know, the common vision to go on the pitch, to play together, to to understand each other on the pitch. It, it, you don't necessarily need the language for it. So that's that's the beauty of soccer in the end. And um, yeah, it, it, yeah, it can work out in a perfect way, but it can also be uh, a difficult, uh, difficult thing. Yeah. And um, maybe speaking of, of roles in a team, so is there any attention paid to the composition of a team in certain roles? Because everybody is a different, has a different attitude. Maybe someone uh, is the natural leader who's the mm -hmm. very outspoken person, somebody who's more shy. Is that uh, taken into consideration or is it only how you deal with the, with the ball on the pitch? Yeah, I think on a higher level like for the club you have to have that filter like also to to have different characters in the team you have maybe all the more experienced players but then you have younger players who can develop and grow i think from a like a leadership perspective in the club uh, who make these decisions for the team for for the coach and everything you have to consider that for sure but for me like for uh, especially as an athlete You're just a part of that and you have to fit in that team. You have to fit in the system and the philosophy and everything. And then you have to perform and give give, give your best. Um, so I think it's a big, big thing. And a, it's very important in the end, if you are successful or not, to build that ecosystem, that energy, that dynamic in the team to to be to be uh, successful in the, in the end. Yeah. And and um, one more role, of course, that's very often spoken about is the is the coach um, has uh -huh. a decisive role on the success of the team overall, and mm -hmm. he's usually the first one that is fired when it doesn't work, uh, or <laughs> maybe. And the, then the players that score the goals are promoted. But what's uh -huh. the what's the actual influence the coach has? Is it really as it is always talked about, or? I mean, I think yes, because in the end, he is really the the leader of that group. He is the, the guy who's, who sets the standards, who is giving the, his philosophy to the to the people, to the people in the club, to the players. So in the end, uh, the coach is very important. Also, the co uh, the team around around him is very important. So, uh, and he, in the end, he bears the the responsibility for everything. But of course, he has certain players. He has a certain number of of players in the team who who has to follow him and. Uh, is probably more closer to him than other players to to like transfer it from like the the coaching perspective to the training pitch to the to the games so to have that uh, relationship with him so in the end that's that's also very important to to build that synergies uh, but in the end he has a, he plays a big role for the team for the players and for the club of course nice um Maybe already moving a bit into the direction of, of business because you're also a, a very active business angel mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes I wonder how you even, how you even do that. Uh, if I believe it's yeah. correct, you have more than 50 investments. Uh, but, but before we go there, because that of course also has to do with, uh, with teams, um, mm -hmm. there's a very interesting book that is quoted like several times in the past years in the startup uh, community, which is from Netflix, No Rules Rules. Um, mm. where, where it's literally about a team functions if there's not that many rules. How is that on the on the soccer pitch? How is it? How many rules do you actually have? Um, and how much of it is spirit in the team? And just as you say, mm. just nonverbal communication, it just Vision. works. But how much of it is really set rules versus spirit of the team mm. in the... Yeah, I think that's also a tricky question because in the end it depends always on the people you have in the team. Because if you have people, you, they need leadership, they need rules, you have to form that team in a certain way. I think then you need to have more rules. But if you have the feeling as a club or as a coach that you have a team, a group of people who is like they play more instinctively or they they need more freedom on the pitch, off the pitch, then you I think you have to loosen that a bit. So. In the end, you have to have a good feeling for people in the end. I think it's it's a people business, of course, and um, then set standards, but at the same time, be disciplined in, in a couple of things. So I think that's the tricky part also for a coach, for, for a team, for the club, to have that, that feeling and then make the right de uh, decisions for it. So it, ca it can, I think it can vary to, to a certain degree. 
um, and you have to be like very, yeah, you have to be very, um, yeah, individual. You have an individual approach to to that. So overall, you'd be, you'd say leadership and the, the human approach beats rules. Um, so in line with no rules, rules, right? So it's it's <laughs> in the end spirit. Um, yeah, it, maybe, kind of definitely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe speaking a bit about the dark sides, and I'm not sure how much you want to reveal about that, but usually teams are also full of conflicts. It's not not mm -hmm. only harmony and and going all well. Um, sometimes yeah. you lose. Uh, sometimes you learn. How, how is it, or, or when you speak of conflict management, that's also one of the reasons why many startups, for example, fail because they, they're not able to resolve conflicts, right? Mm. How does that work for you and your teams? Do you have like a special way of resolving conflicts? Because I'm sure there's, there's many, or there has been many. Uh, is there a special way? Um, not really. The, the, the good thing with us is, for example, uh, if you lose on the weekend, you have a training two days later, so you can prove yourself again. Or you have uh, another situation again. So in the end, we have so many games, so many training sessions. And also within the team, then sometimes you have a bad phase and then you have a better phase. So um, and then like if it's blended together, you have these moments and you need to have these moments, of course, as well. Sometimes it's uh, the, the, the team has to to solve it by themselves. Sometimes the coach has to intervene. So I, I think there is a there's a variety of, of topics during a season because for us it's normally you're, you start at a certain point and then you have 10 to 12 months of a season you have to work on on certain things to develop to grow uh, during the season to to um, reach your goals in the end and I think there are not not what there's no not one rule for that or to like solve this problem that way so there are so many factors all the time like on the training pitch on the uh, or if you have games and there are difficult situations sometimes you have better situations that And this kind of like energy and, and uh, dynamic needs to be solved either right away or maybe the, the next day to work together because in the end you have to perform 10 months and we don't have to, that time to like look back and say, oh, okay, last week we lost, now what we are going to do. So in the end, this, is, this needs to be resolved very, very fast. Yeah. So it's a, it's a commitment to conflict resolutions as soon as they, they emerge. Um, yeah. One last question. Uh, soccer related question maybe maybe uh, some more a little later but is there yeah. like an outstanding person a teammate um that you have played with in your career um that was for you an incredible team player that always was the glue that that really made the team stick no matter if it's a coach or a, f a fellow mm -hmm. player anybody that comes to mind and 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 why Yeah, in the end, when I look back now, my the last 12, 13 years, um, uh, when I become uh, since I become a professional soccer player, I always mention Jurgen Klopp because I think he has this natural gift, you know, for like understanding people and then making like communicating it in the right way and then making the right decision at the right moment. So I think that's also a skill you need to develop. But I think he has that talent for it. If you see how he how successful he was in Mainz, in Dortmund, in Liverpool, and then transferred it to all these clubs, not only in the team, but also in the in the whole ecosystem of the club. I think that's that's pretty impressive, yeah. Yeah. Well, he, maybe he'll become the national coach after he leaves Liverpool. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um, Spending a bit more time now in your in your second career, um, yeah. which is you <laughs> becoming a very active angel, uh, which I really right. find great because the people the world needs more people that actually invest into new um, ideas that potentially right. may fail. But I'm yeah. uh, quite sure that you're not doing that just by yourself. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you have a team. Like I couldn't imagine managing 50 investments just by myself. No. But can you like? Walk us a little through how did you build the team there? How did you build your career there? What did you take into consideration uh, when it comes to actually starting to become an angel? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's very similar um, to what I do as an athlete because in the end it it did not happen like over two, three, four weeks. So in the end, I started six years ago when uh, I had the feeling that I need to look outside of the pitch, you know, and see what other athletes are doing. For example, in the US, they have built their own PE firms, they have built their own venture fund. And I was always curious, uh, why did they do it and how did they set it up? So that's where I looked at the, at the beginning a couple of years ago. 
And uh, the biggest bottleneck I have in the end is that with family and soccer, I barely have time for these things. So in the end, I need good information. I need a good team. I need to make the right decisions. Most of them are out of syndicates in the end because I need to have uh, the right the right approach to it because I believe if you want to do something the right way and 100% and you want to be successful as an investor as well, then you need to put it in everything you have. So uh, I do this on the pitch and if I can't have, uh, if I don't have the time for it, I need the team for it. So that's how I started. Uh, I have a small team in the background and, and the great network of people who I reach out to, who understands the space, the industry, uh, the people, um, and then to make the right decision. Of course, uh, startups, especially pre-seed seed stage, um, is a different game. And, and also I know that it's a high risk investment. I know there are a lot of people and businesses who, who fail at that point. But um, that's that, that's what I yeah committed to. So, yeah, part of the game. Yeah, exactly. Fail <laughs> and learn. And um, you said you have a small team, you have a network. Um, but but how do you select these? Like how why why do you work with these people and, and and not with others? Based on what criteria do you actually assemble your team? Do you build your team? I think it's also um, it's pretty simple. Also to like have that shared vision. They have. Uh, um, shared values the values i have so i try to filter that because in the end i have to work with them i it, it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be like me but uh, in the end they they should have um, a similar approach to similar values mm -hmm. and um, that's how i try to assess the people um, who i chose to work with in the end of course there's also um, sometimes fluctuation you, you for me uh, in, in my case for example I moved from Munich to Dortmund, from Dortmund to Düsseldorf, from Düsseldorf to Frankfurt. So I also change uh, my ecosystem, my environment a couple of times. So that's also not easy to build a team hands on. Um, luckily, there's a bit more of a remote culture now. So uh, this, this, in that case, it helped me a bit, but also makes some things a bit uh, more difficult. But um, that's how I try to assess it. And of course, you have different phases. Also, when I look back six years ago, when I started in, in venture capital, uh, I make different uh, decisions now than six years ago. And that's also what hey. I try to like, um, yeah, help with my people also to make mistakes, to understand it, to learn, to grow and to get better in the end. That's, that's uh, how I approach it also in the venture capital space and also with my team and the people in the background and, um, try to yeah. encourage them in that way. So you have people that work with you, for you on your personal vision, right? On the vision to actually fund uh, uh, younger startups that actually make a dent in the universe or change. Um, yeah. But you also mentioned that you have a certain network that you can turn to when it comes to new investments. Yeah. Uh, at Tomorrow University, we ask all of our students to actually build a personal board, um, which mm -hmm. is literally a, a set of mentors, three to five people mm -hmm. that they constantly can reach out to when they're stuck yeah. with their mission, when they cannot really work uh, any further, where they need support to a certain area for growth. Yeah. Do you have a number of mentors? Do you have uh, mentors that have accompanied you for a certain while, um, or is it like changing persons that you listen to that give you a, that give you advice? I think both ways. Uh, so in the end, there are like topics and where I have to like a, a certain need, and then I reach out to that people for that certain case. Uh, but I also have like three, four people. Like for example, in the soccer area, I have an, a management agent who I like uh, getting advice from. Uh, but also in the in the venture capital space, I have three, four people with whom I share a lot uh, and they have been in that industry for a long time. And I have also uh, like two, three other people in the sports business area um, who I reach out to if I need a certain advice. So I, I, I really like that idea, what you mentioned, which I try to, to live Great. to almost every day, every week. Yeah. Great. And do you have um, a very clearly defined vision and mission also then for your investment activities where you say, um, that's exactly what I want to do over the course of the next years. And then you assemble also the team, the supporters, plus of course the investments circling all around that and also defined values, for example. Um, I have a, I have a vision for that, yes. I, I want, because I started five years ago, of course it changed and varies a little bit, but in the end, what I want to do or what I want to build is a like a, build a resilient portfolio in that venture uh, capital space. So in the end, what I want to have in that firm is like a different kind of like uh, stages, industries, 
geograph uh, ge ge geographies uh, like from angel to private equity so for now there are more than 50 angel tickets uh, different stage pre-seed seed series a then i have venture capital funds with different industries different geographics and so on so to build a resilient portfolio to either like help the startups for example from pre-seed to maybe private equity exit so to have that whole life cycle and that's what i want to build and have a resilient approach you you know how it is some some yep. uh, some startups won't make it but i think that's good to have that value to generate that value to accompany them like over the whole uh, life cycle they have and that's the idea i have for the next five six years and then it it um it has a certain value and a certain base to to build that all over again mm -hmm. and they're speaking of these 50 plus tickets um how do you actually select um, your investments? Do you have like a clear like team evaluation criteria? Do you speak to the founders and then see how they tick? Uh, or is it really more on the market opportunity, more on the recommendations? Yeah. Due diligence, can you really do it uh, when it comes mm -hmm. to the team? Because I know many investors that say the idea doesn't really count, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in the very like early stages, the idea is nice, the market is important, but even more important is the team. Mm. So how, how diligent are you when it comes to selecting <laughs> based on team? I think it's a good question because in the end, um, what I do normally is you have the first phase where you have that market, the idea, the, you try to assess the timing of the company and all these kind of things where are like, I would say like hard factors, which are like, you can assess really good with your team and people. And then you have this like soft factors where you try to assess the team, the people, the values, all these kind of things, which is not really like, you cannot put it really into into numbers or data or facts and you have to just like build that feeling a bit uh, which okay. is very difficult to ass uh, assess but in the end i have these two approaches and then try to like find the people or the founders the teams who have that like let's say that drive mm -hmm. that understanding that that something you know that something within them which they could like lead them to something special. But I think it's difficult to assess because also when I see it as an athlete, what I've done or seen in my career, you have to work with them. You know, you have to see how they fail, what they do, how they decide. So how do you assess that before you work with them and understand how they would react, how they work, how they like build, grow and so on. So I think that's, that's very difficult, but that's also the, the, the beauty of it. Yeah. It's wonderful. I mean, just touching some some elements when it comes to working with the startups. But before we go there, um, you spoke of also you have some some data when it comes to investing into startups. But how much of it, like everybody has a different approach. How much of uh, how much of it is gut feeling from your mm. end? Like wow, mm. that's, that's a great team. And how much of it is really data driven in the, in the sense mm. that you get references, you look at past performances, and all mm. of these things. I think this depends also on the stage of the company or is it a VC fund or whatever. So for funds or later stage companies, you have uh, more data, more facts uh, you can assess, but especially in pre-seed seed, whereas ideation stage or whatever, um, which is very difficult to, to have a lot of data. Uh, so I think it depends on the stage of the company, where they are at that moment when I invest. So um, that so in the end, it varies also uh, a bit uh, depending on the stage of the company. and. Um, yeah, of course, uh, you, you want to have as much data as possible to assess the, the outcome. But um, normally, especially at, at pre-seed, it's, it's almost impossible. Yeah. yeah. Is there any founder entrepreneur that stands out for you? Same question as, uh, as with regards to the, the, yeah. the soccer pitch, where it was Jürgen Klopp. But is there anybody no, no. where you say, wow, that's an impressive leader and team player um, in like the entrepreneurial realm? Yeah, I think that's a bit more difficult to like say one name now because in the end I worked with Klopp for like a couple of years. I was there hands on. I've met him like every day and trained with him, spoke with him. So in the end for me that's difficult to assess because uh, the only thing what I can say is that I had a couple of calls, like five to six calls where you have that feeling in the call or when you meet someone that he has that drive, that understanding, he, is, he has that clear vision. Um, but I, I, I can't uh, say one name now. So in the end... I think it's also like be there, understand it. That's what I said a couple of weeks ago also in an interview where uh, what I want to do after my career is like to learn, to to be hands-on, to, to really stay there like every day and understand what they are doing on a daily basis because I think then you get that feeling, that understanding and, and can assess even more 
if that person has that quality and skill set for, for, for success. Mm. I mean, you, you said very much when you take a, a, a decision to invest, it needs to be aligned, they need to be driven, passionate, dear, and um, is there anything that, that would prevent you? So given that this is all there, but is there any characteristic of the team or any anything that you observe where you say, that's a red flag for me, I would never invest into a team like that if they show behaviors like that, if no. they act according, not according to X, Y, Z, is there anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I I probably think this is the, like the typical things. If if you have the feeling he's not telling the truth, if you have the feeling there's something not right, like within the team, if you have the feeling that um, there's there's something, like he's I don't know, uh, out of nowhere, he he might be arrogant or he's like these kind of things where I I would say I don't want this guy in my team when I play soccer. I don't want to invest in this guy who has the same values like when I. This is something I, I wouldn't do and I wouldn't invest in. So um, I think there's certain also soft correct uh, characteristics which I, I would not uh, like to see. No. Yeah, and interestingly, there was a study particularly pointing out the topic of arrogance because that right. that means that you're not able and willing to learn if you're arrogant. Mm -hmm. You have to be conflicted, of course, with overconfidence. A certain mm. amount of yeah. overconfidence is good when it comes yeah, to exactly. starting a business. <laughs> I mean, you have to build it, build it the crazy vision that you that you yeah. come up with. Um, maybe just one or two more questions before we wrap it up. Um, I'd be really interested in, you said you also work with the teams to a certain ah. extent. Um, mm -hmm. How can I imagine that if you have like 50 different investments, oh, yeah. um, it sounds like impossible uh, that you can't support them in any <laughs> <laughs> but is there how do you support them how do you work with the with the startup uh, teams i would say it's more like also a passive approach it depends always because in the end now there are like for example two teams in frankfurt who i meet a couple of times during the year uh, during the year sometimes they maybe only need like one advice per year other companies they are like reach out on whatsapp and say hey do you know this guy do we have someone in the us uh, can you introduce me to this one uh, or do you have a, a company who could be like uh, could we reach out to? So in the end, it also depends on the company, what they need, in which stage they are, uh, where they see a lot of value. So uh, this is very, this varies a lot. With some companies, uh, I maybe see them once a year, uh, if at all. So um, that's how I try to approach it. But it's more like a passive support um, because in the end, I cannot like during my time and energy management with family and, and, and soccer, it's... Uh, it's impossible. Yeah. I fully understand. And maybe speaking of an outlook and, and your vision, um, I mean, I hope you're going to play for quite a while uh, uh, <laughs> and still keep on playing for yeah. quite a while. But speaking of <laughs> that, that second career, what's your vision for it? Um, is it even more investments? Is it even a known fund? Or in which direction do you want to move mm. uh, when it comes to helping and supporting uh founders? I think it's not clear yet, um, but in the end, I want to do what I started five years ago in the next five years, and then we will see where I am at that moment. What I, I really like is to like build that intersection with sports and, and for example, private equity and venture capital. Uh, I've just recently seen the role of uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic. I don't know if you have seen it, but in the end, he's an advisor to Redbird Capital at the same time advising AC Milan. So like building this intersection, I think it would even like progress and develop even more in the next couple of years in Europe. And I, I really like that intersection, like sports, business, and what specific role it is in the end, we will see, but um, that's how I how I see myself in a couple of years. Yeah. Cool. I know the model of uh, Serena Williams. I'm myself yeah. a, oh, is... a tennis player. She set up her own her fund. fund. I think that's also an uh, interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Maybe maybe a final uh, a final question because um, most probably you get like requests every day and uh, in investment pitches and pitch decks every day. <laughs> but for you personally, what makes you a great team player? Um, like, if anybody will want to work for you, this is what they can also expect from you, and that that's mm -hmm. what you are as a team player. I'd just be very interested. Um. I think it's also very simple. I think it's being like um, very hands-on, very open-minded, uh, always like have the have a certain drive, like which comes from within. This is probably because this like a company since I was ten years old, like to build something, to be curious, to like 
work like uh, work like hell uh, and and try to change something. I think this is what I want to see in the end because I've seen it when I well I've lived it when I was ten years old and it accompanied me the the last uh, the last years uh, since I started playing football. So in the end, that's what I also want to see in that space and uh, yeah, that's probably the most nice. important thing. And the uh, most important advice that you ever got uh, that you want to pass on uh, when it comes to building teams, leading teams. Building teams. I think when it comes to that certain area, it is to understand that it doesn't happen over a day or a week. Because I, when I was young, I wanted to do everything at once and now, and it has to happen tomorrow, otherwise it won't work. So I think to have yeah. that patience, which I didn't have when I was young, which might also be good that you have like, um, not that standard and you want to reach some heights you have never reached. So that's also good to have the drive, but to also have that patience to understand that you have to fail at a certain point that you have to take, it has to take time for the, for yourself, but also for the team to be successful in the end. And uh, also if you see the big companies and uh, very successful and sustainable companies, it, it takes time. Yeah. Yeah, it, it takes time. It takes commitment, didn't it? Wasn't it Michael Jordan who said you have to fall seven times and stand times. up eight? Yeah, uh, eight times. Probably so a I couple think. of more times. <laughs> Most probably, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Mario. I I, I personally you. found it incredibly insightful to learn from you. Thank uh, you. When it, building leading teams, I'm sure that uh, student learners will do so too. And um, yeah, I'm curious to see where that all leads you. I think. Me too. <laughs> The second career that you're starting is uh, actually just starting. So good luck with yes, all of that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.